So, I know this might seem pretty straightforward, however, the G-Logic timescale is a little bit different from most timelines that you're used to, and it can be a little overwhelming when you look at this timescale at first. Lots of words, lots of numbers. So I wanted to make a quick video just to show you how we read this timeline. So, first thing to note is that each of these columns is an era. Okay, so each column shows an era. Alright, so the Cenozoic, Mesozoic, Paleozoic, Precambrian. Alright, so each of these columns is going to be a different era. Now, when we look at the eras, those are each divided into different time divisions. So we have periods, epochs, and ages all within those eras. So if we look in, let's say, let's look at the Mesozoic, okay? When we look at the Mesozoic, we have the Jurassic period over here in the middle, okay? I can tell it's a period based on the name up top here. It is divided into the Late Jurassic Epoch, okay? I'm in the Epoch column, Late Jurassic, Middle Jurassic, and Early Jurassic. Okay, so the Jurassic period is divided into three different epochs. Those epochs are then further divided into different ages. Okay, the Tithonian, uh, I don't even honestly know how to say that. So some of the ages are a little bit more uh, complicated names, but either way, we divide them further. Now these divisions are created based on a variety of different things. We saw in the interactive assignment not too long ago that they can be divided based on extinction events. Sometimes it's climate events, maybe like an ice age starting or ending. Um, sometimes it's other major geologic events that change. But each division is created based on something in the world changing. Now. You're going to have to use this um, time scale to be able to find the start, end, and length of different time divisions, okay? There's two different ways of doing this, okay? If you notice on the left-hand side, there's a column that says age, okay? This column that says age gives you the time scale. You can see all the numbers along the side. And if you look at the lines of the end, beginning or ends of the division, you can look over to the left and estimate what number it is. There's also a column all the way on the right that says picks. Okay, the this column that says picks also gives the start and ends, and it pulls the specific numbers that relate to each time division. Okay, so you can get more a bit more specific with the pick side over here on the right. Both give you the start or end, just a matter of whether or not you want to estimate or you want to find the exact number. Now, if you notice, both the pick side and the age over on the side here, they have MA. Okay, MA is our unit. MA means million years ago. Okay, so MA stands for million years ago. So when I look at this, if I want to look at, let's say, the Jurassic period, okay, I want to look at the Jurassic period. I have one end at 145, the other one at 201.3. Okay, I'm looking at how many million years ago. Okay, and this time scale is read backwards, all right? Present day would be up here in the corner somewhere, all right? That's where the present day would be. So as you move down, it gets older, okay? And as you move down each of the columns, further down to this bottom uh, right corner, that gets older and older and older. So when we look at the Jurassic period over here, the beginning of the Jurassic is going to be down here at the bottom, at 201.3 million years ago. And then the end of the Jurassic is up here at the top, at 145 million years ago. So you have to read it backwards, okay? The end is at the top, the beginning is at the bottom, right? And that's just because present day is up here in the corner, and we work our way down as we get older. 
So this should help you be able to read the time scale. If you are still stuck, have more questions, please make sure you let me know.